Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. Susan Tran has a night off. And we begin tonight at 9 with breaking news. DC police are at a barricade situation right now. Police say it's happening on Mississippi Avenue. This is in southeast DC. DC News Now's Daniel Hamburg is live at the scene. You just arrived there, Daniel, and obviously a very active scene right now. Well, Chris, uh, the call came in around 730 tonight for a report of a person with a gun, and now we know that it is a barricade situation. As I step out of the way, we are right here at the corner of uh, 21st and Mississippi Avenue Southeast. Uh, D.C. Police says the emergency response team is en route uh, to the scene here. They're asking uh, people to avoid the area as they work to resolve this incident. We also, of course, can see the helicopter uh, overhead circling around. Uh, we don't know exactly what is happening uh, inside or where exactly this is happening, but we do know there is quite a police presence on scene here with uh, more than a dozen police vehicles and more officers continuing to arrive. So as we learn more, we will bring that to you. But for now, we are live in Southeast. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. And Daniel, of course, will continue to check in with you. Thank you. Meanwhile, developing now at nine pressure mounting overseas for a ceasefire agreement in Gaza it comes after six hostages were found dead over the weekend. That includes an Israeli American man who was captured by Hamas during the October 7th attack of a music festival. And back here at home, the Jewish community is mourning and honoring those six hostages tonight. Our Marielle Carbone is live at Adas Israel in Northwest DC. And Marielle, the prayer vigil, it's still underway at this hour. Uh, yeah, Chris, it started about an hour ago. We just came outside to speak with you now, but I can tell you uh, it's incredibly emotional and difficult for people inside here tonight. Uh, the sanctuary at Addis Israel completely packed with people, and that includes family members of one of the hostages killed over the weekend, uh, Caramel or Carmel. Gat. Now, her cousin, a family member, speaking just about the person that she was. Uh, we're told that she was set to be released and rescued by Israeli forces along uh, with five other people, but instead was killed over the weekend by Hamas. Uh, another one of the hostages killed, as you mentioned, Chris, an American Israeli man, Hirsch Goldberg Poland. Now, uh, his family members also present tonight here in the sanctuary speakers. They have said that the last 11 months have just been heartbreaking, but tonight it's really about coming together and uniting. They are calling for an immediate release of any remaining hostages in Gaza. Six young people, their lives were snuffed out for no reason other than the fact that they happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time and they were Jewish. So. I ask people in the, who are not Jewish to reach out to their Jewish friends and to go ahead and to please embrace them and say we sympathize, we understand what you're going through, and to give them a warm hug. That was Ron Halber there. He is with the Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Washington, D.C. That's just one of the many organizations coming together tonight to put this vigil on. Uh, we also have a lot of community leaders, elected officials inside here tonight. That includes Council Member Brianne Nadeau. Also inside, second gentleman uh, Doug Emhoff uh, sitting inside front row here, taking a listen uh, to the prayers and, and being a part of this tonight. So uh, a lot of people here again calling for that release of any remaining hostages. Live in Northwest, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. All right, meanwhile, at the University of Maryland, leadership announcing only campus-sponsored events that promote reflection will be allowed on October 7th. This after the Jewish Student Union raised concerns over a permitted event on McGeldon Mall hosted by Students for Justice in Palestine. University says all other events held prior to and after October 7th will take place in accordance with the First Amendment. All new tonight, the Justice Department announcing criminal charges against a leader of Hamas in connection with that October 7th attack in Israel. Attorney General Merrick Garland saying today's charges are just one part of the U.S. effort to target Hamas's operations and says these actions won't be the last. Now, pressure is mounting on Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to reach a ceasefire deal. Protesters you can see here gathering for a second day in Israel after the death of those six hostages. We'll have much more on the deal the White House says it's working on. That's tonight at 930.
Meanwhile, D.C. police have now identified the man they say dropped a gun down a storm drain during a chase, which later accidentally fired and killed Officer Wayne David. Investigators are offering up to $60,000 for information leading to the arrest of Tyrell Bailey. Bailey is wanted on an arrest warrant for illegally having a gun. The 27 year old is accused of tossing that gun into a storm drain last week and taking off in the back of a motorcycle on DC 295. It happened Wednesday. Officer Wayne David died after he accidentally shot himself while trying to grab that gun. Leesburg, Virginia police are looking for these four people on your screen who they say broke into a Burberry store. It happened early this morning at the store at Fort Evans Road Northeast. Officers say the suspects smashed the front window to get inside. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Well, happening tomorrow, businesses and people living in portions of southern Prince George's County are preparing to conserve water. WSSC is asking customers to do so in order to replace a failing water main. The utility issued an essential water use only request for people in Rosaryville, Clinton, Marlton, Brandywine, Aquakeek, and also portions of Fort Washington. This request means people should stop all outdoor water use, such as watering lawns, topping off pools, and washing cars. We spoke to a worker at a Clinton car wash who says this restriction will be a major inconvenience. Car washing, you know, so yeah, yeah, see, dirty car. So when I, when I initially saw it, I sent it to my mother-in-law and my husband and I said, oh no. The water restriction is expected to last about three days. Crews need to replace a failing section of major water main under down uh, Dower House Road there in southern Prince George's County. All right, let's get a first check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. Janessa, just a beautiful evening out there once again. Really an ideal night to perhaps just open the windows. Yeah, nice breathable air. Take this in. I mean, we're going to have repetitive sunshine and nice breathable air for the rest of the week, folks. Not much changing with this forecast compared to yesterday. The only minimal change is the wind flow. It is very light in nature at this time, and so it's making things very comfortable across the entire region 70 degrees across the suburbs of DC but my friends out towards Kaiser Cumberland Woodstock uh, Winchester Western Maryland upper 50s right now quite cool outdoor towards Spotsylvania and Northern Virginia and then Southern Maryland we do have a few 70s that are lingering across uh, Lexington Park into St. Mary's dew points they remain down and they will stay that way as high pressure is well to our north and it's just going to continue to circulate 24 hours ago when I saw you we had temperatures that were about five to ten degrees warmer so tonight it is a little bit cooler and going into tomorrow it's almost the same exact weather pattern that you dealt with today wall-to-wall -wall sunshine temperatures are very similar for daytime highs i do have rain in the forecast for one day this week i'll show you when coming up chris right. see you then janessa thanks all new tonight the loudon county sheriff's office is offering a twenty five thousand dollar reward for any information that leads to an arrest and a deadly shooting. Investigators say it happened last Wednesday near an apartment complex on Ridgetop Circle. They say the two victims were taken to the hospital where they later died. And developing now shocking new details in a Fairfax County case of alleged child abuse. Police say they arrested a 46 year old mother and her boyfriend for chaining her two children to furniture. Our Max Marcilla shares what we know tonight. Well, it's certainly a case that has this neighborhood talking. Most people telling us it's just an awful situation, especially for the two kids just seven and nine years old. Fairfax County police say on August 15th, cops showed up here to Tower Drive in the Groveton area for a report of a child neglect case. And I saw all the police start showing up one after another. Neighbor Stephen Weber says he saw what happened that night. The kid was just, you know, standing there kind of in. He looked like he was in distress. What led up to the eventual arrests of a 47 year old mother and a 29 year old man was revealed in court records detailed by the Associated Press. The nine year old borrowed a cell phone from a roommate in the apartment and sent a photo of his chained foot to his older sister who called 911. The records also say the kids were chained to scare them so they wouldn't leave the apartment. I never expect something like this happened to to the kids, you know. This neighborhood shocked and saddened by the allegations. If a kid's involved and he's calling you guys, then obviously something 
is going on. So I just wish they would have, you know, somebody would have stepped in sooner than, than later. Now shifting their focus to hoping the kids are okay. I don't know what, what's going to happen, but I hope they, they're doing okay now. We're not sharing the names of the mother or the apparent boyfriend to protect the identities of the kids. What we can tell you is that the mom posted bail and she's now due back in court in October. Meanwhile, the boyfriend is still behind bars, due back in court for a bond hearing on Wednesday. Reporting in Fairfax County, Max Marcilla, DC News Now. And back here in the district, check this out here. Four people, including three children, were inside this white car when a tree fell on it today. DC Fire and EMS saying it happened at Northwest on Woodley Road. They say all four people are okay, which really is amazing. I mean, look at the back broken window there and just the size of that branch and that tree there. Meanwhile, in Virginia, more than a dozen bus routes of the Fairfax connector are changing. County says it'll provide better service to riders. Among those changes, Route 558 will split into northern and southern portions of Reston and create a, night, a new route. Route 494 will begin stopping at the Springfield Community Business Center and Route 371 from Lord Springfield will replace routes 372 and 373. Now this all starts September 14th. That's a week from Saturday and on September September 16th, a new express route will run between Tyson's and Bethesda, Maryland. All new at nine people living in College Park, Maryland will start noticing these stop sign cameras. City says it's all part of a one month pilot program to make drivers hit the brakes at stop signs. The cameras are only set up to gather information for the city and citations for running stop signs will not be handed out to drivers. City officials say the program is really meant to make roads safer for everyone.